What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is an exciting day. We finally got in a lot of our paint stuff we need for the Tacoma. So that's what we're gonna get started with. One thing I wanna do before we jump into paint is I got another can to dash from Fast Forward. We're gonna try this out. As you guys know, this thing's having tack issues. So this is a converter for the tack, the glow plug light and the check engine light. The glow plug light acts a little bit weird. It just barely flashes and the tack is delayed quite a bit. Sometimes it's like 10 seconds. Sometimes it won't react at all. So I already did send the one I have. I sent it back and he updated it or did something with it, sent it back. It didn't change anything. So I bought another one. We're gonna try another one out. If this doesn't work, we're gonna swap over to a Dakota digital uh, TAC interface type of thing. It actually uses a signal off the alternator, so it should be pretty easy to wire that up. But I really want to use this if it works because it's got check engine light and glow plug light. The Dakota one does not have check engine light or glow plug light, and those are all over the CAN bus system on the Volkswagen, so really you need a converter like this to get those signals converted so you can actually run it to a bulb on your cluster. So I'm really, really hoping this is gonna work. So let's swap this out real quick and try it out. All right, we got that new uh, Cantu dash hooked up. Let's fire it up and see how the tack works. Uh, still lagging. It's a little bit faster, maybe. Oh, see that time it didn't move at all. What the hell is up with this? Yeah, this thing's still screwed up. Well guys, as far as that Cantu dash goes, I really have no idea. I cannot get it to function correctly. I have verified we got power, we got a good ground. I have checked the voltages of those can high and low wires. I know that really doesn't tell a whole lot, but everything seems to be working correctly and the tack still doesn't work. So I think I'm gonna order up a one of those Dakota interfaces and we have to do a little soldering on the alternator to get an unregulated voltage reading off of that alternator. I think that's what the Dakota wants. You can also use a crank signal or a cam signal. I think the easiest thing is gonna be the alternator. But either way, that is in the future. Right now, we are focused on bodywork and paint. So what I think I'm actually gonna do is these two doors that were very messed up that I had PDR'd. They are spray painted black right now, so I will have to strip that off. But before I strip that off, I think what I'm going to do is block it out and just make sure there's nothing that's super high. All the low spots we're gonna have to deal with with filler and or dollies and pull it out flat. But if there's a bunch of high spots, I wanna beat those in right now before I prime it and start laying down filler. So let's get these cleaned up real quick and just do a really quick block on them just to kind of see where we're at. All right guys, you can see there was some high spots. I kind of knocked them down and it is fairly close now. It's still obviously 
Oh, a lot of low in here. That's gonna need some filler work. Obviously, these things were completely destroyed, but I think that is fairly close. One other thing I like to do, I don't know if the, if the professionals do it this way, but when I'm looking at this body line here, uh, on top of the body line in this section right here, it is kind of concave like that. You can get a straight edge and kind of run it down like this, and you can see it's curved, but then there's that little concave right there. You can see the gap through and then go to this side, and it's actually factory how that body line is, and I'm pretty sure, so you can see right there, there's that gap right there. So honestly, I think what they did is completely filled that in because there was Bondo along the whole bottom, uh, or right above this body line across the whole door. I'm pretty sure they just skimmed that all the way in and did away with that body line. That's why there was so much Bondo right here. So obviously I'm gonna leave that and just kind of focus on this area here. The bottom of the door, um, it's gonna need a little bit, but honestly, looks really, really good. This whole back section was pushed way in. Um, this door is pretty close. Back here was really bad. Around the handle, it was pushed way in, and you can see, honestly, it doesn't need a whole lot. Maybe just a little bit of filler. Honestly, maybe even high build primer would deal with these little tiny low spots from where he was moving the metal around and it's still kind of dented in. He actually said he has to kind of leave divots in there because the metal was so stretched that these little divots actually take up space in the metal to be able to keep its shape, if that makes sense, and actually have some strength. If you were to pull it out straight and not have these little divots to take up that extra space in the material, then it'd be really weak. It'd be like a pop can. So, um, gonna need some work, obviously, but I think we're pretty close. I might do a little bit more on these high spots here, but I wanna pull these doors off. I'm gonna completely strip all this paint off, so I'm gonna pull the window out, pull these gaskets, pull the mirror off, pull everything off, get the doors actually off of the truck, go outside again and not completely destroy the shop with dust, and strip all this paint. I'm not gonna actually strip all this down on the actual cab. I'll just sand it and feather it out and then do some sealer on top of it to hopefully lock that in and it shouldn't have any more issues. But the tops of these doors, I just do not want to put paint over that. So let's get to work pulling these off. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do first is pull all my fender flares off. These flares are coming off for paint. So I think I'm gonna go through, pull the flares off. We'll pull the doors off, we'll strip them. And then we got epoxy primer to lay down on the bare metal to seal that up, make sure it doesn't get any rust or anything on it. And then we'll start our bodywork on top of the epoxy.
All right, we're all masked up and cleaned off. So I'm gonna give this probably 15, 20 minutes just to air out, make sure there's no uh, cleaner left on. I actually switched to a water-based cleaner. A lot of people are saying it's a lot better for especially bare metal. I'm not really sure why the wax and grease remover for me has always worked great, but I figured I might as well try it out. I actually switched my whole line of uh, paint and primer. So I am trying out Tamco uh, paint products. This is their DTA, which is direct to anything is what they call it, uh, epoxy primer. So this is a one-to-one -one mix. So we're gonna mix up and do two coats of the epoxy. I am actually kind of curious if any of you guys have ever used Tamco paint, drop a comment, let me know if you like it. I did a lot of research and seems like a lot of people really like the products. And honestly, the price you can't beat. They're very reasonable and I, I couldn't find any bad reviews. So I figured might as well try it out on this. So the game plan with these doors, we're gonna do two coats of the epoxy and then we're gonna wait a day. Tomorrow we'll come out here, lay down our body filler and then we'll sand that. And if we burn through the epoxy that we laid down, we may have to put more epoxy down, but we'll get the filler work done and then we're gonna switch to a, another one of their primers. They call it another DTM direct to metal primer, but they say it's a high build primer and it's direct to metal. So I don't know, apparently it kind of does everything, but I'd rather put an actual epoxy down first on the complete bare doors instead of doing that kind of a high build hybrid uh, epoxy or whatever. I'm not even sure. They claim it's a really good epoxy and a really good high build. But either way, we're gonna do that on top of the filler and then we'll scuff that and then we'll shoot our base and clear on top of that. So let's get the primer mixed up and shoot these doors out. We got two coats of the epoxy down on the doors. I'm having some slight issue with this stuff. Hopefully you guys can see this on the camera, but it looks like I'm getting solvent pop. And no, it's not because I was laying it on too heavy. It did it the first coat, it did it the second coat. The only thing I can think of is I didn't let the cleaner that I used, the waterborne cleaner from Tamco, um, I didn't let that evaporate enough, but what I did was I wiped it down. I cleaned it really good made sure it was very very clean I blew it off with compressed air and I let it air dry for probably a half hour. So I Figured that was long enough. Maybe it's not but that's what I've always done and I've never had issues both doors Look the same with that what looks to me like solvent pop just looks almost like you threw sand all over the top of it. So I got to call Tamco tomorrow, kind of go through and see if there's a fix for it. I really hope I don't have to strip all this off. I should just be able to sand it flat and move on with the process, but I want to call them and get their take on it before we move forward. All right guys, it is now the next day. Our primer is drying up nicely, but we still got uh, the sandpaper primer. I think I actually found the issue. Check this out real quick. So this is my strainer that I use and you can see all those white little dots. I think that is something in the primer that didn't get mixed up 100% and that honestly looks like the same thing 
that's what sprayed out just smaller stuff that made it through that strainer so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to let this stuff completely dry it's still i mean it's dry but i think i'm going to give it one more day just to get it real dry and it should sand a lot better too and i'm going to flatten this out and kind of see what this does when i sand it and i may just recoat it i actually talked to tamco and they said i could probably do my fillers on top of this but depending on how it sands out I may just do another coat on top of this and then go to my fillers. Also, I had one other issue. I don't know if it was messing up the primer right now, but I had quite a bit of moisture in my airlines in my, I have a desiccant filter right out of the compressor. And then I have that little orange one you guys have seen on the bottom of my gun. Both of those were kind of used up and they were wet. I was kind of in a hurry yesterday to get this primer laid down and I completely forgot to drain the compressor and drain my water trap and check my desiccant beads. And like I said, they were wet. So I think that was one of the issues. But this issue I have all the time with, especially sandblasting when I'm running the compressor and it warms up, it creates a lot of moisture in the airlines. So I think what I'm going to do while I let this primer dry up completely in order to sand it, I think I'm actually going to build a big copper uh, water trap on the wall. So I think I'm gonna end this video right here and we're gonna pick up the next video. We're gonna build a complete water trap system on my wall. The point of the copper pipe is to let the air cool off and turn the water vapor basically back into a liquid form so that the water traps are actually effective. When you don't have that copper system where the air actually cools off before the water trap, the water vapor just continues right through your trap and goes into your airlines. As soon as it cools off, say 10 or 20 feet after your compressor, it turns back into water liquid form and then it goes right into your air gun and creates all sorts of issues. Like I said, when I'm sandblasting, I actually sometimes notice drips of water out of the fitting. So it's been an issue and I want to get it figured out. So I'm gonna end this video right here. If you guys wanna see that water trap, stay updated on the channel for the next video. We're gonna build this thing out and hopefully we can get it to work and hopefully solve all of our moisture problems once and for all. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go smash that thumbs up button. We'll see you guys in the next one.